Hi, I'm Richie Kotzen, and in this video I am going to be showing you guitar techniques that I use in my playing and on my records. And I want to start off by making sure that we're in tune together. So the first thing I'll do is I'll play each string and you can get your guitar and make sure that we're in the same tuning. We'll start off with the high E string. As far as a, my improvement, basically I've been playing the guitar for a long time now. I started out when I was seven. I started taking lessons officially. I was seven years old. And from the be beginning, you know, when I first started playing, I, I always loved it. You know, it was something I wanted to do. Uh, I loved music, and the guitar was always a great outlet for me. Uh, where I grew up outside of Philadelphia, I was, you know, far enough out of the city where there wasn't much to do, but I was close enough to listen you know, to the radio stations and hear that music they were playing back then. So that was very inspiring. You know, a lot of the R&B and the spinners and that sort of thing influenced me as a guitar player and as a musician. And as far as my style, that just came out of different things I was listening to. You know, I would listen to rock bands like uh, Van Halen and and that sort of thing, but at the same time, you know, I was listening to the Spinners and uh, Stevie Wonder and that sort of thing. So uh, I have those kind of influences that come out in my playing, and then also it leads down to the sort of, uh, you know, jazz uh, influence. I wouldn't consider myself a jazz musician per se, but I have that influence and that sort of rock fusion influence from you know bands like Return to Forever and that sort of thing. Specifically. The guitar is concerned. In the beginning of my guitar journey, I started out just learning like anybody else that took guitar lessons, you know, simple songs, and I learned how to read music and notes. And my teacher would write out assignments where I would have to learn how to play Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star, and that sort of thing. And then eventually it turned into him teaching me about theory and chords and how they related to each other and how scales related. And then by that time, I might have been 10 or 11, I started listening to records and listening to things that I liked and I would try and figure them out. And, and that's kind of where the real evolution came, where I would like listen to um, an Al Demiola record and try and learn something. And of course I couldn't play it nearly the way he could play it, but you know, it would, it would develop my ear. Or I'd listen to a Van Halen record and, and try and copy Eddie Van Halen and, and that would, you know, take me to another place. Um, and then eventually, I started playing in bands and playing with other musicians. I always tried to play with guys that were older than me and that knew a little bit more. So by doing that, I was able to learn from them and pick up on the things that they had already learned through their experience. And then I sort of would feed off that and then move on to the next. And, and I was lucky in the sense that I've always been able to get in positions where I'm playing with musicians that have had more experiences than me and been, you know, a little bit ahead, you know, down the line. You know, even if it's, and not always musically, not always like musically superior, but maybe they've played in musical situations that I've never been in and I can learn from that. So there's always something to learn no matter, you know, who the musician is. You can always pick something up. So it's good to pay attention to that. Okay, here we are in the first section of the video, and this is a pentatonic-based licks. Now, in, in my playing, and especially in the, in the rock style of guitar playing, you've got a lot of things that you'll play that'll be based around a pentatonic scale, I mean, even in jazz and obviously the blues. Um, a lot of the note sequences or things that you play on a theory level will come out of this pentatonic scale. It's basically a five-note scale. And what I want to do 
is start off by showing you the scale in the five different positions. Um, in other words, starting off each note of the scale. And what this will do, it'll, it'll enable you to use the entire neck of the guitar when you solo. Because what happens in a lot of guys when they're, when they're playing, they'll start soloing and they'll get caught up in an area of the neck. And whatever they're playing, you know, how complicated or simple, they can get stuck in that certain section of the neck. But you got to remember, you got all these notes available to use. So the first thing you want to do, and this is true with any scale that you learn, uh, you want to be able to play it in any position. That way, you know, you're, you're able to, to utilize the entire neck. And then eventually what will happen is those positions will become a second nature for you, and you won't be thinking in terms of scales at all. You'll just be thinking in terms of melodies and rhythms, which is ultimately when you're soloing and improvising, how you want to be thinking. You don't want to be thinking about, okay, I'm going to use this scale and then I switch to that scale. That's not the way you should play music. Uh, you want to be thinking in terms of melodies and rhythms and hearing what you're playing in your head